Hello friends! Welcome to A Month in My Life as a 20-something year old software engineer living in Auckland, New Zealand. Enjoy this montage of scenes from my life while I share my thoughts on two topics. The pros and cons of being a software engineer and the differences between being a student and a working professional. So sit back, grab a drink and let's get started. Let's start with the pros. As a software engineer, most of our time is spent coding. Yes, there are meetings and planning sessions, but definitely not as many as a product manager would have, for example. The features we work on are broken down into small manageable tasks called tickets. So the usual workflow is that we pick up a ticket, read through the requirements and clarify with the PM if necessary, then start coding. With coding, it's really easy to get into the state of flow. Since your tasks are already defined, there isn't much room for ambiguity. This being said, it does vary depending on the level you are at. For example, a more senior software engineer might have more meetings and less defined tasks than a junior. Coding at its core is challenging but also creative. It forces you to think outside of the box. There are oftentimes multiple ways to write code to achieve something. And even when I'm stuck on a problem or a bug, yes, it's challenging, but the satisfaction you get from solving it makes it so worth it. I also like how I can use code to build cool projects. For example, I'm currently trying to build a card game and my personal website. The more code I write and the more features I build, the better I get at coding and using those languages and frameworks. And the best thing about this is that these skills are highly transferable. For example, if you're using a Merlin stack at work, you can join any other company that uses a similar stack even if it's in a different industry to your current workplace. And given how tech is embedded into almost all industries now, you could go from working at an edtech company to say a creative media company. Even if the new company doesn't use a similar tech stack to your previous one, the knowledge that you built up previously will aid you in quickly learning the ropes of the new tech stack. Also, with coding as a skill set, there are many options you can have in terms of side hustles, for example, freelancing or writing software. There is a lot of flexibility and freedom. For example, you can work from home and work remotely. Because the thing is, with this job, all you really need is a laptop and Wi-Fi. In fact, there are so many remote-only tech companies out there too. Also, unlike other fields such as law or healthcare, where your license only allows you to practice in certain countries, with tech, it doesn't really matter where your degree is from. As long as you have the skills, you can work in any company in any country. Tech companies usually have a lot of benefits, such as healthcare insurance, subsidized gym memberships, and a work-from-home budget. The average salary for a software engineer, even for a fresh graduate, is also typically higher than other industries. And lastly, there's a really good work-life balance. Working overtime is not common, and the environment is generally very stress-free. I'm not sure if it's just because I'm working in New Zealand, to be honest, but I'm not complaining. Okay, so you've heard the good things, now what about the cons? Given how fast technology evolves, software engineers need to constantly learn new things to keep up. The most popular framework right now might just be a thing of the past in the future. This pressure to have to constantly upskill can be quite stressful, making you feel like you need to code outside of work too. It doesn't help either that there is a lot of competition. For example, there are those that studied CS or engineering at university, those that did a boot camp, and those that are self-taught. And you can even add AI to the mix now. So yeah, imposter syndrome is rife in this industry, but regardless of your background, it is ultimately your skills and personality that matter. Since working as a software engineer means that you need to sit in front of a screen all day long, your days are quite sedentary. But to be honest, this is the reality of most office jobs these days, regardless of what you're working as. You can combat this though by implementing things like taking a break at set times or having a standing desk. For me personally, in order to get more movement into my life, I started getting into fitness last year. I got a personal trainer and learned how to lift weights, joined Pilates classes, started hiking, and this year I even got into running. In fact, I've got a half marathon coming up soon, so wish me luck. Now this one is a little bit more personal, but my observation from almost two years of working is that I don't really feel a sense of purpose in my job. Every day, I'm just improving myself. I'm getting better at coding. Even though I am contributing to business goals and solving the client's problems, I don't feel like I am directly making an impact in anyone's lives. I imagine this would be very different for someone like a teacher or a doctor, for example, as you have direct interaction with the people you are helping. So because of this, I started volunteering this year. I'm a music volunteer at one of the hospitals in Auckland, which means I go in once a week to play the piano for the patients. 
This gives me nice, warm, fuzzy, wholesome feelings, especially when the patients really vibe with the songs. And in fact, one time after I'd finished playing, one of the patients stood up and drew a smiley face on the whiteboard. The volunteer coordinator then told me that the patient is generally one that does not express their feelings, so for them to do that was significant. This was so heartwarming to hear, and it's great that I can use my passion to help others in this way. Now let's talk about the differences between being a student and a working professional. As a student, I had a lot of work to do. I had lectures to watch, assignments to complete, tests to prepare for, you guys know the drill, right? So this meant that I always had stuff in my mind. My focus was to just get through everything and count down to the last exam I had for this semester. As a working professional though, my workload is a lot more relaxed. I work 8 hours a day, and then after that, I'm free to do whatever I want. I don't bring my work home. Like, sure, I can do more personal learning outside of work, but it's not a requirement. In uni, my schedule was up to me to determine. I just had to go to classes and labs, and the rest of my time was not fixed. This meant that while I did have a lot of work to do, my time was up to me to manage, so I could easily spend a whole day just doing nothing, or making a video just doing anything non-study related, as long as I made sure that I did what I had to do at some later stage. For work, even though I have a smaller workload, 8 hours of my day are blocked out for work. That's like most of your day gone. So what this means is that while I am free to do whatever I want after work, I am often really lazy and just want to be unproductive. So yeah, that's the compromise you have. Even though I studied computer science, the work I do as a software engineer is very different to what I learned in my degree. I've had to learn a lot of things on the job and on my own. So yeah, uni is theoretical but work is practical. Either way though, you're still learning in both situations, but the main difference is that at work, you get paid to learn. At school or uni, it's really easy to stay in touch with friends because you see them often. However, once you all graduate and start working, maintaining friendships becomes a conscious decision you have to make. I'm quite fortunate in that my social life right now revolves mainly around my flatmates and church friends, and I couldn't ask for a better group of people because we've made so many memories together. But as for the friends that I don't see as often, I do need to take the initiative to catch up with them and try to align our schedules. And oftentimes this means planning a catch up like a month in advance. So yeah, that's a little glimpse into my life in my 20s living alone in Auckland. I hope this video gave you some insights into how it's like being a software engineer and how life is like after uni. I'm curious about you though. If you're a software engineer or recently entered the workforce, do you share the same sentiments? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, please like, share, and subscribe if you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!